Shakti Pods here, too. The Seals of Wisdom, Fusu Sal Hikam, by Muhyib Ibn Ibn Al Arabi. This is a Sufi mystic text from the 11th century. The first chapter is called The Seal of Divine Wisdom in the Word of Adam. When Allah, glory be to Him, willed that the source of His most beautiful names, which are beyond enumeration, be seen, or you can equally say that He willed His source to be seen, He willed that they be seen in a microcosmic being, which contained the entire matter, endowed with existence, and through which His secret was manifested to him. For how a thing sees itself through itself is not the same as how it sees itself in something else which acts as a mirror for it. So he manifests himself to himself in a form which is provided by the place in which he is seen. would not appear thus without the existence of this place and his manifestation Tajali, to himself in it Allah brought the entire universe into existence through the existence of a form fashioned without a spirit called Ruh like an unpolished mirror Part of the divine decree is that he does not fashion a locus without it receiving a divine spirit, which is described as being quote-unquote blown into it. This is nothing other than the result of the predisposition of that fashioned form to receive the overflowing perpetual manifestation, Tanjali, which has never ceased and which will never cease. Allah. Oops. Then we must speak of the container, Kabil. The container comes from nothing other than his most sacredly pure outflowing. So the whole affair has its beginning from him and its end in him. And quote unquote, the whole affair will be returned to him as it began from him. Thus, the command decreeing the pol decreed the polishing of the mirror of the universe. Thus, the command decreed the polishing of the mirror of the universe. Adam was very Adam was the very polishing of that mirror and the spirit of that form. The angels are some of the faculties of that form, which is the form of the universe, which the Sufis designate in their technical vocabulary as the great man, al-insan al-kabir, for the angels are to it as the spiritual ruhani and the sensory faculties are to the human organism. So it says here that the angels are some of the faculties of the form of the universe, which are like the sense faculties to us, they're like the faculties of that virad purush, of that form of the universe, the universal form, virad purush. Each of these faculties are veiled by itself and it sees nothing which is superior to its own essence. For there is something in it which considers itself to be worthy of high rank and an elevated degree with Allah. It is like this because it has an aspect of the divine synthesis, Jamia, in it is something which derives from the very uh, from the divine side and something which divides uh, excuse me 
In it is something which derives from the divine side and something which derives from the side of the reality of realities. This organism carries these attributes as determined by the universal nature which encompasses the containers of the universe from the, the most exalted to the basest. However, the intellect cannot perceive this fact by means of logical investigation, for this sort of perception only exists through divine unveiling, by which one recognizes the basis of the forms of the universe which receive the spirits recognizes the basis of the forms of the universe. So, so far in this text has a lot to do with the Shabda Brahman documentary. And it talks about recognizing the basis of the forms of the universe in the form of the tetrahedral grid. And also in the idea that the ultimate reality exists as God's names and also his forms which are manifested in particular worlds, which are associated with that form and name in the spiritual Vaikuntha. So not only do you have Vedic philosophy upholding this truth, not only do you have Jewish philosophy upholding this, but you also have Islam and Sufi mysticism upholding the same truth. Continuing. This being was called both a human being, Inshan, and a caliph. Caliph is the title of the Islamic divine king. As for his human, it comes from the universality of his organism and his ability to embrace all of the realities. He is in relation to Allah as the people being the instrument of vision is to the eye. This is why he is called Insan. It is by him that Allah beholds his creatures and has mercy on them. So he is a human being, both in time in his body and before time in his spirit. An eternal and after time organism. He is the word which distinguishes and unifies. The universe was completed by his existence. He is to the universe what the face of the seal is to the seal. For the locus of the seal and the token with which the king places the seal on his treasures. For that is the locus of the seal and thus the token which with, with which the king places the seal on his treasures. So they're talking about a stamp type of seal now. Allah named him Khalif for this reason. Since man guards his creation, his, H-I-S, capital H-I-S, God's, as treasure is guarded with the seal. As long as the seal of the king is on the treasure, no one dares to open it without his permission. He made him a caliph in respect of the safeguarding of the universe, and it continues to be guarded as long as this perfect man is in it. Do you not see that? That when he disappears and is removed from the treasury of this world, Nothing that Allah stored in it will remain. Everything that was in it will leave it and all the parts will become confused and everything will be transferred to the next world. Then man will be the seal on the treasury of the next world for endless time and after time. All the divine names contained in the divine form appear in this human organism. Thus it possesses the rank of containing and integrating this existence. It was by this that Allah set up the proof against the angels. So remember that. Allah admonishes you through others. Look at, what, uh, look at where that originates and where it ends up. The angels did not realize what was implied by the organism of the Caliph nor did they realize what the presence of the truth demanded as ibad worship. Each one only knows from Allah what his essence accords him. The angels do not possess the universality of Adam, and they could not understand the divine names 
with which he has been favored, and by which he praises Allah and proclaims his purity. They only knew that Allah and names, they only knew that Allah had names whose knowledge had not reached them. So they could not praise him, H-I-M capital, nor proclaim his purity through them. What we mentioned overcame them, and this state overpowered them. They said about this organism, why put it on one who will cause corruption on it? This is only the argument uh, this is only the argument which they were voicing. What they said regarding Adam is exactly the state they were with regard to Allah. Had it not been that their nature was in accord with it, they would not have said what they said in respect of Adam. And yet they were not aware. If they had had true recognition of themselves, they would have had knowledge and had they been in possession of the knowledge, they would have been protected, would have resisted by belittling Adam, and thus exceeding their claim of what they possessed of his praise and glorification. Adam was in possession of divine names, which the angels did not have, so that their praise and glorification of him was not the same as Adam's praise and glorification of him. Allah describes this to us so that we may ponder on it and learn adab with Allah and so that we will not lay claim to what we have not realized or possessed by pinning down. How can we allege something which is beyond us and of which we have no knowledge? We will only be exposed. The divine, this divine instruction is part of Allah's discipline of those who his slaves uh, those of his slaves who are well-mannered, trusting, and caliphs. Let us return to the wisdom under discussion. No, that universal matters which have no existence in themselves are without a doubt intelligible and known in the mind. They are hidden and continue in their invisible existence. These universal matters have jurif... Uh, jurisdiction and effect on everything which has an individual existence. Indeed, they are the same thing and nothing else, i.e. the sources of existent individual things, and they continue to be intelligible themselves. They are manifest in respect of the sources of existent things, just as they are hidden in respect of their intelligibility. Each individual existent thing depends on these universal matters which cannot be dislodged from the intellect, nor would their existence be possible in the source once they cease to be intelligible. Whether that individual existent is in time or out of time, very interesting, the relationship of that which is in time or out of time to this universal intelligible matter is the same. The universal matter, this universal matter only has jurisdiction in individual existent things according to what realities of these individual existent things demand of it. It is like the relationship of knowledge to the knower and life to the living. Knowledge is an intelligible reality. Knowledge is as distinct from life as life is distinct from knowledge. So we say, has knowledge and life and that he is the living and knowing, capitalized living and knowing. We also say that the angel has life and knowledge and is living and knowing, lowercase. We say that man has life and knowledge and man is living and knowing. The reality of knowledge is one thing and the reality of life is another. And their relationship to knowing and living is the same relationship. We say that the knowledge of Allah is in non-time and the knowledge of man is in time. Look at the evaluation of that this relationship has brought about in this intelligible reality. Examine this connection between individual intelligibles and stents is necessary, rather it is necessary by another, not by itself, as knowledge determines the one who participates in it, as he is called knowing, so the one who is described by it can determine the knowledge. 
it is in time in relation to the one in time and non time in relation to the one in non time. Each of the two is determining and determined. It is known that these universal matters, even if they are intelligible, lag a source, although they still have an authority. When they are determined, since they are ascribed to indi an individual existent thing, they accept the, the, the principle in the existent. They accept the principle in the existent sources and do not accept distinction or fragmenting, for that is impossible to them. For them, they themselves are in every detail described by them, as humanity is in every person of this particular species without distinction or the numbering which affects individuals, and it continues to be intelligible. Now, as there is a connection between that which has an individual existence and that which does not have one, as it is a non-existent relationship, and it is a non-existent relationship, so the, the connection of existence to each other is easier to conceive because in any case there is a common factor between them which is individual existence. In the outer there is no common factor, yet there is a connection despite the lack of a common factor, so it is stronger and more real when there is a common factor. Without a doubt, the in time establishes itself as being put into time, and it needs something in time to put into time. It has no place in itself, so it exists from something other than it, and it is linked to that, uppercase, by the dependence of need. This dependence must be on that whose existence is necessary, which is independent in its existence by itself without need. It is that which by its own essence gives existence to the in time which depends on it, uppercase it. Since the existence of its essence is necessary and what appears from it depends on it for its essence, it nevertheless depends, uh, it nevertheless depends on its form for everything which is from a name or attribute except for the essential reality. That is not the property of in time, even if its existence is necessary. Rather, it is necessary by another, not by itself. Since matter, uh, since the matter is based on what we said about its manifestation and form, in its form, Allah communicates to us knowledge of Himself through contemplation of the in time. He tells us that He shows us signs in the in time, so we may draw our conclusions about Him through ourselves. We do not describe him with any quality without also possessing that equality with the exception of that essential autonomy. Since we know him by ourselves and from ourselves, we attribute to him all that we attribute to ourselves. For that reason, divine communications came down on the tongues of our interpreters. And so he described himself through us, to us through ourselves. When we witness, he witnesses himself. We are certainly numerous as individuals and species, yet we are based on a single reality which unites us. So we certainly know that there are distinctions between individuals if there are not, there would be no multiplicity in the one. Similarly, we are described in all aspects by that which he describes himself. But there must be a distinction, and it is none other than our need of him and our existence. Our existence depends on him by virtue of our possibility. And he is independent of that which makes us dependent on him. Because of this, one can apply before timeness and timelessness to him, which negates that firstness, which is the opening to existence from non-existence. Although he is the first, firstness is not ascribed to him, and for this reason, he is called the last. Had his firstness been the firstness of the existence of determination, it would not have been valid for him to be the last of the determined, 
because the possible has no last, for possibilities are endless, so they have no last. Rather, he is last, because quote unquote, the whole affair is returned to him, Quran 11-123, after its attribution to us. So he is the last in the source of his firstness, and the first in the source of his lastness. He is the last in the source of his firstness, and the first in the source of his lastness. Then know that Allah has described Himself as the outwardly manifest and the inwardly hidden. He has brought the universe into existence as a visible world and an unseen world, so that we might know the hidden by the unseen and the manifest by the visible. He described Himself with pleasure and wrath, and so He brought world and the world into existence as a place of fear and hope. So we fear his wrath and hope for his pleasure. He described himself with majesty and beauty, so he brought the universe into existence with awe and intimacy. It is the same for all that is connected with him. May he be exalted. And by which he calls himself, he designates these pairs of attributes by the two hands, which he held out in the creation of the perfect man. Man sums up all the realities of the universe and its individuals. So the universe is seen and the Caliph is unseen. It is with meaning that is with this meaning that the Sultan veils himself, even as Allah is mentioned as described as having with veils of darkness which are natural bodies and luminous veils which are subtle spirits, Arwa. The universe is composed of both the gross and the subtle. The universe, in its, uh, the universe is its own veil on itself and cannot perceive the truth since it perceives itself. It is continuously in a veil which is not removed since it knows that it is distinct from its creator by its need of him. It has no portion of that essential necessity which belongs to the existence of Allah so it cannot perceive Him. In this respect, Allah is never known, never fully known by the knowledge of tasting and witnessing because the end time has no hold on that. Allah only applied, quote unquote, between His two hands to Adam as a mark of honor. And so He said to Iblis, what prevented you prostrating to what I created with my two hands? 3876 that is none other than the union of, in Adam of the two forms, the form of the universe and the form of the uppercase real, R-E-A-L, and they are the two hands of Allah. Iblis is only a fragment of the universe and does not possess this comprehensive quality. Iblis is the name of, of, of Satan, I think. It is because of the, this quality that Adam was a caliph. Had he not had the form of the one who was appointed him, appointed him Caliph, he would not have been Caliph. If there were not in him all that is in the world, and what his flocks over whom he is Caliph demand of him because of their dependence on him, and he must undertake all the need from him, he would not have been Caliph over them. The Caliphate is only valid for the perfect man whose exterior form comes from the realities of the universe and its forms, and whose inner form is based on his form, uppercase, may he be exalted. For that reason, Allah has said of him, I am his hearing and his sight, quote unquote. He did not say his eye and his ear, so he differentiated between the two forms. It is the same for every existent, every existent in the universe, which appears according to what the reality of that existent demands of it. Nonetheless, no one totally comprehends what the Caliph has. One only surpasses others by his this comprehensiveness. If it were not for the diffusion of Allah into the existence by the form, the universe would not have any existence. Similarly, were it not for these universal intelligible realities, no principle would have appeared in individual existent things. From this reality, the universe depends on Allah for its existence. So all is in need, and nothing is independent. That is the truth, and we have not spoken metaphorically. 
If I speak of, of a something independent, without any need, you will know who I mean by it, uppercase. The whole is tied to the whole, and cannot be separated from it, so understand what I have said. Now you have learned of the formation of the body of Adam, his outer form and the formation of his spirit, his inner form. So he is the real uppercase and a created being. Now you have learned of the formation of his rank, which is the comprehensiveness by virtue of what he is worthy of the caliphate. Adam is the unique self from which the perfect human species was created according to his words, quote unquote. O oh, mankind, be fearful of your Lord who created you from a single self and created its mate from it and disseminated many men and women from the two of them. His words, be fearful of your Lord, mean to make of us, mean to make of what has appeared from you safeguard for your Lord and make what is concealed for you, which is your Lord, a safeguard for yourselves. The matter consists of blame and praise, so be his safeguard in the blame and your safeguard in the praise, and that you will be among those of knowledge and adab. Then he showed him what he had placed in him, and he put on his, and he put that in his two hands. One handful contained the universe, and the other handful contained Adam and his descendants. And he showed them their ranks in Adam. Then Allah informed me in my inner heart, Siri, of what he placed in this Imam, the great progenitor. Imam is like a guru. I have put in this book some of what has uh, what was allotted to me, but not all of what I realized. A book could not contain that, and not even the present existent universe could contain it. I have put some of what I witnessed in this book as the messenger of Allah. May Allah bless him and grant him peace to find it. It was the divine wisdom in the word of Adam, that is, this chapter. Then there is the wisdom of the breath of angelic inspiration in the world of Sheed, Set, the wisdom of divine inspiration in the word of Nu, the wisdom of purity in the word of Idris, etc., uh, etc. Et there is a seal for each wisdom, so I have condensed these wisdoms according to what is established in the mother of the book, and I compiled uh, with what was written for me and stopped at what was said as a limit for me. Even if I desired to do more than that, I would have not been able to do so. Indeed, the presence forbids that, and Allah is the one who grants success. There is no Lord but Him. So before that, he's writing out a long paragraph about all these different seals, which he has written as um, 27 chapters of this wonderful book called The Seals of Wisdom. And I'll try to get more uh, to you and make some more videos, um, and I'll definitely be uploading this this book on my website, Uttama Shakti, under the sacred text section. If you want to check that out and read them, you can. 